All right. So today we're continuing to really uh, continue our discussion from last week, which focused on the judges and kings. And so we saw that God wants to form us and specifically the Israelites into a community uh, with God as the ultimate head. But part of the problem was uh, when Samuel came along and really with his, um, with the judge before him, Eli, uh, they had the prototypes of PKs, preacher's kids, uh, who were uh, not doing everything well or right or as they should be. So uh, the Israelites asked for a king. So they rejected God's rule and asked for a king. So the topic we're really going to talk about today is still talking about community, but it's seeing how our own individual actions can have an effect on the community. And we're going to see that through David and Bathsheba specifically, uh, which um, is the, the only real topic we've covered so far that's maybe not as kid friendly. So uh, warning to parents. And um, although uh, just as a, as a brief aside uh, for um, talking about uh, this topic with David and Bathsheba. So the story is actually in the Children's Illustrated Bible. And when I was much younger, uh, being very precocious and, and wanting to learn everything and all that, I, I, I was reading through the Children's Illustrated Bible. I got to the story of David and Bathsheba and um, it's maybe a third grader at that point, uh, maybe a little younger. Um, I did not understand what was going on in the story. And of course, went to my poor mother <laughs> to ask her about this. Um, we were really fortunate in that the, the uh, deanery for the cathedral where I grew up was right around the corner. <clears throat> so my mother and her infinite wisdom said, let's go on a walk, <laughs> hoping, probably praying <laughs> that we'd run into the dean out on a walk. Because um, I think he, he normally was out uh, walking around this time of day, which we, we, we did, and we ran into him. And, and then he got to explain what all <laughs> happened. And I wish that I could remember exactly how he uh, explained the story, because that would certainly be helpful uh, for any little ones, but um, that's just kind of my little brief story of uh, my first encounter with the story of David and Bathsheba. But as we get into this, uh, a little bit about David first. So David is probably the king I, I would imagine most of you are familiar with and, and those of you watching later um, of the kings of Israel. Um, you're probably familiar with the story of David and Goliath. Um, so really from the onset, David was this great warrior. Um, and he was chosen to fill in as king after Saul um, angered God. So, David, in a lot of ways, is seen as the golden age of the kings of Israel. Um, he really established the royal family. Uh, we also know he, he. We also know he was a great artist. He was a great um, writer, singer. Uh, he wrote the vast majority of the Psalms um, in the Psalter. So there's a lot going for David. Um, there's, there's a lot that we put on him that we like about him. Uh, David's family, of course, is, is his line is where Jesus's line came from. Uh, so David is kind of in a lot of ways really seen as the best of the best when it comes to the kings. 
So we talked a little last time about the warnings, though, that Samuel gave the Israelites about the kings. Um, and those warnings were that the kings would do kind of whatever they wanted. And there, there's a, one of the passages in there sort of hints at this, this idea that, that the king's going to send off your sons to go to war. So that idea is basically that the king's going to be hanging out in the king's palace, um, just chilling while all the other soldiers are going out and fighting, essentially, for him. And we wouldn't think that David would be that kind of king at first. Because David, I mean, again, he's a warrior. That's how he gets started. Uh, during the period between his rule and, and when Saul was still on the, the throne, uh, Saul was, was seeking after him, seeking after David's life. David was kind of basically a gorilla in the caves in Israel. Um, he, he was a warrior. Um, even as a shepherd, I mean, we have this sort of idyllic view of what shepherds are. Uh, the reason he could fell Goliath with that slingshot is he had a lot of practice getting rid of the beasts that were attacking the sheep. So he was a fighter. And yet it's David who decides not to participate in battle. He decides to stay home in the palace. And it's from that event that sort of everything that happens with the royal family in Israel goes downhill. Um, so while David is doing what he's not supposed to, um, not being with his troops, staying at home, he spies from his palace Bathsheba, who's on her rooftop bathing. There's a couple of things to keep in mind here. Um, so Bathsheba is often seen as a temptress. Uh, let's get past that idea from the get-go. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, this story of David Bathsheba is kind of a precursor to what we see with um, the Me Too movement now, where you have a man in power, and that power is used to manipulate uh, women, or in this case, a woman, to do what David wanted from her. Um, so Bathsheba goes up, this would have been a normal thing, uh, about the only person that could have seen her would have been the king and the palace, because you're on the roof, nobody else is going to see you where you're bathing. But he does, and he likes what he sees, and he asks her to come over. Uh, even though she's married and married to a soldier, uh, Uriah uh, specifically. And so Bathsheba goes to the palace and does what the king wants. Because again, he's the king. What's she gonna do, say no? And of course, this liaison with them puts them in a very awkward position because Bathsheba then has to send a message to David saying, I'm pregnant. And that's all she has to say because she hasn't been with anyone else. Her husband's not there. And so David, in, in trying to hide this sin, uh, does even more sins. He, he brings, he, this in, in itself is not that bad. He brings Uriah back um, from the lines. But he does so because he's, he's basically trying to make Uriah think that, that Bathsheba's baby is his. And it doesn't work because Uriah is a really good man. So he doesn't go home. Um, because he wants to um, I mean, ritually pure, what have you. He's, he's trying to, to not do something that the rest of his fellow soldiers could do, you know, all of that. He's trying to be a good guy. So he doesn't go home. He actually sleeps out on the, in the streets that night. 
And David asked him, you know, why are you doing this? He's like, well, you know, all these other soldiers are doing, you know, they're not able to go home. You know, I, I can't do this right now. David's like, okay, you know, great. I guess you know, that plan didn't work. So instead, he puts Uriah on the front lines. And Uriah, of course, is killed in battle. And so David then marries Bathsheba, and she gets ready to have their child. Then we get Nathan coming in. So Nathan is the prophet of this time. And I'm going to read uh, from 2 Samuel 12, um, just because it's a great story. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, there were two men in a certain town, one rich and one poor. The rich man had a large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb he had bought. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. It, sh it shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, as surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are that man. And um, I won't go through all the stuff he says after that, but the response of David to Nathan is, oh my gosh, he says, I have sinned against the Lord. So um, that's a, that, that is a great story to tell the kids. Um, for maybe explaining a little bit what's going on. Actually, I was thinking of, as I was reading that, a better one. Um, I think it's King George and the Rubber Ducky. It's a um, VeggieTales uh, video, uh, which is great and cute and deals with the difficult situation that's going on here. So Nathan uses this story to basically show David you've messed up big time. Uh, and the, the good thing about David, I think where we see, where we see in David all that we've seen before and, and, and all that does make him great is he does say, I have sinned against the Lord. Like he does, when he has this story presented to him in this way, he realizes how much he messed up. Now, the consequence of this is that um, Bathsheba and David's uh, son gets sick and dies. And, and David, another interesting thing with David, which is a, I think shows a lot of character for him. He's in sackcloth the whole time that the kid's sick um, because he's hoping that maybe God will decide to not do what he said he's going to do, that, that maybe God will have mercy on the, on the child. And when the child dies, he just goes back to normal. And everyone's like, well, you were mourning while he was alive. And he's like, yeah, because I thought I could do something about it. Then. But this is, this is what I get for my son. So, um, you know, I got to go on now. But, but the thing is, is that David never really let go of this. He never really let go of what happened. Um, and unfortunately, the result of that is um, later on, there's this whole internal struggle within the family. And um, Absalom um, ends up standing up for one of his sisters, which snowballs into him going into a full-on rebellion against David. And the whole time, David doesn't really do a lot to, to stop Absalom. Um, and even when um, Absalom's killed in battle, uh, there's, uh, there, there's a great uh, spiritual um, 
based on, on his words, oh, Absalom, my son Absalom, would to God uh, that I had died for thee. Um, and it takes one of David's captains to basically be like, what are you talking about? He, he was a traitor. Like he, he did all this thing. You, you gotta get over this. Um, so really we start to see the weakening there. That, that David hasn't gotten over what he's done. He he's, doesn't give the proper discipline to his children, and which, since it's the royal family, it leads to a revolt. But the other interesting thing is uh, he and, and uh, David and Bathsheba do have another son, and that son is Solomon. And that son, of course, ends up being the next king. But as we talked about last time, Solomon, um, while he's a wise king, while he also helps usher in this golden age of ancient Israel, he also brings in a lot of foreign wives, which bring in a lot of temples to other gods, which bring the people of Israel further away from God. Um, and it's immediately after Solomon with his children that the kingdom of Israel um, is divided. Another interesting thing to note with Solomon um, is uh, that, that doesn't have bearing on this, but, but shows again the kings making these choices to follow themselves and not God. If you ever look at um, an ancient diagram of Solomon's palace, and the first temple. Temple, you know, I mean, it's big, but it's you know, it's about this. The uh, for for those at home, so you can see the, uh, the the palace of Solomon is huge. It dwarfs the temple of God, and of course, it should be the opposite, right? The palace should be smaller. The temple should be bigger. So even then, Solomon is making his house bigger than the house of the Lord. But that's just an aside. Um, really, the reason that I wanted to talk about this story with David and Bathsheba is it shows that our actions can have dire consequences in the community. And unfortunately, I think that's something that we've seen with the pandemic a lot too. Um, and it's, it's greatly affected how I have personally acted in this, because because there's a, an aspect of the story that is really haunting, is in knowing that um, you know a choice that I could make, you know, go, going out being with a large group of people, and and coming back to our community um, and the communities I served before here, um, and possibly bring a, a virus that could devastate. You know, people here, it, it that that unsettles me, um, and I think it's something we all need to think about to some extent. Is is how do our individual actions affect the wider community? Um, because I think it's easy for us to go about our lives and think of it that it's we're living just for ourselves. But really, we're not. We have we have a church community here as Christians. Um, we have other communities that we're part of, and like with David with Bathsheba, one action can have dire consequences to the community. I'm not saying this to to make you second guess everything that you do, but it is. I think it's helpful for us to take a step back and think about our actions and the impacts on others. Because if we can do that, we can help foster a better community, one that loves each other better, one that's focused on the needs of others better. And I think that's really what we see with, with David's story with Bathsheba. Um, is that if we're focused on just ourselves, the consequences can go beyond ourselves.
but thinking back to David's um, descendant, um, Jesus, our Lord, at the same time, an action out of love for a community can do so much good as well. So these are just the things to take away from this, that we don't live alone, that we, that we are part of various communities and we're called on to show love um, for our fellow members of those communities. And now I'm gonna open it up if there are any questions. And I'm gonna pull the chat up while y'all are thinking in case we have any questions online. All right. Well, if there are no questions, uh, what we'll do is we'll stop here today. Um, what we'll be doing next will be um, a little lighter than, than the topic today. Um, what we'll be going into after this week, um, we'll uh, maybe have a little bit of a conversation about the prophets, um, but, but fairly soon we're gonna be moving into the New Testament and we're gonna see more what that has to say about community and specifically what it has to say to us as Christians about our own community. So thank you all and we will see you all soon.